when I was in England for the Aminar M several years ago. My wife and I were privileged to help out a wonderful community in the suburb of Pena. And um, we were there to help them out with the Yom 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 Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. And uh, this is a community that tripled in size um, over that time, and they needed extra people, so we were one of some of those people. And on Yom Kippur afternoon, there was a panel discussion with me and another rabbi, and anybody who wanted to stay at shul was able to ask whatever question they wanted related to Judaism. And one woman asked me the following question. This is a woman who I'd already met, a woman who was well-known, considered prominent in the community, and she asked this question. She said, I'm a mother, and I just think that Hashem doesn't treat us the way a good parent should treat us. And he even tells us this, even tells us the way he's going to treat us, and it doesn't strike me as the way a good parent should treat their children. For What does she mean? She says, look in the second paragraph of Shema, the one that appears in Prashat Ekev. Hashem says, if you, im shamo, im shamo, if you listen, I'll reward you. But if you don't listen, I will punish you. That's what she says. She says, that's not a way for a parent to treat a child. A parent shouldn't punish a child for doing something wrong. A parent should educate their child. Parents should help their child improve, not punish them when they make a mistake or when they do something wrong. How is it that Hashem is mistreating us, that Hashem is treating us worse than any parent should treat their child? So I answered her the following answer, which I thought was pretty good at the time. I said, we have two types of relationships with Hashem. We have the ideal relationship, and then we have the real relationship. In an ideal world, there is no reward or punishment. There is only love. And that's the first paragraph of Shema. The, the paragraph of Ahavta and Hashem Alkecha Bechol Vavcha Bechol Mavshcha Bechol Modecha. You should love Hashem with all your soul, with all your heart, with all your might. And all the other mitzvot of Tefillin and Mezuzah are about bringing Hashem close into our lives. So that we in, in teaching our children about Hashem, they're all acts of love for Hashem. That's the ideal relationship. But we also have the reality that sometimes we we aren't worthy of that kind of love. We mistreat Hashem. We don't act in a loving way towards Him, and then that's when the Hayam Shamor relationship comes in. And yes, he punishes us, but it's only in order to reestablish that initial love. Because sometimes it's necessary. And we see actually in the end of Ahayam Shema that we starts repeating the same phrases that we saw in the first paragraph of Shema, such as, We should put Hashem's words there on our hearts and on our souls. We also have the mitzvah of tefillin repeated, the mitzvah of mezuzah repeated, the mitzvah of teaching our children about Hashem repeated, so that we can come back to that really loving relationship with Hashem that we originally had. And she seemed satisfied with that answer, and I was pretty proud of myself because I thought of that on the spot. But since then, I think there's an extra factor that, um, that needs to be added to this. And... Um, I hope that this young woman, wherever she is, maybe gets to see this video and hear that I've been thinking about her question. And I think there's more to it than simply what I said then. That's this. Actually, uh, she was right. A good parent educates their children, doesn't just punish them. They're restorative, not punitive. And in Vahayam Shamoa, we actually see restorative practice from Hashem himself. He's not punishing us. He's educating us in that moment. How so? Let me let me explain. We have a preamble to the Hayam Shalah. Something that's a recurrent theme in Pashat Akev, which is the idea of rain, the role of rain. 
The land you're coming into to inherit Locheret Mitzrayim, he has shown you that Satim Mishab. It's not going to be like the land of Mitzrayim that you came out of. And you watered with uh, your foot. We opened the canals from the Nile um, just by kicking the barrier away. And uh, it was easy. The land you're coming into, you need rain in order to survive. Why is this? What's different about it? It's a place where Hashem is constantly focused on it. The eyes of Hashem are on it. From the beginning of the year to the end. And therefore, if we treat Hashem well, He will give us rain. If we tr- if we do keep the mitzvot, He will give us rain. And if he, we don't treat Hashem as we, He wants, then He'll withhold rain. What's the point of rain? Rain is a living message. It's a metaphor that's too obvious, supposed to be too obvious to miss. Rain is life. We can't live without rain. We can't live without water to drink. We can't live without the food that grows from the rain, especially in Israel. So where do we get our rain from? Where do we get our life from? It comes from the heavens. It's no wonder that the Egyptians worshipped the Nile when that's where they got their life from. We get our life from our Father in heaven, Hashem who appears as a cloud, on Har Sinai, in the Mishkan, Beit HaMikdash, Hashem, who appears as a cloud, sends us rain. This is life coming from Shammayim. So when he withholds rain, that's an educational message. It's not a punishment. It's saying, guys, remember. Remember where your life comes from. It comes from the heavens. It comes from Hashem. Hashem who demands moral behavior of us, who demands mitzvot, who demands goodness, kindness, compassion to one another and to him. That is the message of the rain. That's the, that's the missing piece that tells us that Hashem actually is educating us. He's not punishing us when he withholds rain. He's reminding us of where the source of our life comes from. And that's the first step that helps us to improve just the same way any parent would. So that woman was right. I wasn't wrong when I said we have two types of relationships with Hashem, the ideal and the real. But there's more to it than that. Even in the real life relationship of mistakes and sins, misdemeanors, even then Hashem doesn't just punish us. He still educates us the way a loving parent would. He's not punitive, even then. He's restorative. He's not harsh. Even when we sin, he's loving. He's not a distant, disapproving deity. He's a loving parent. He sends us the message of rain. And it's a lesson which can nourish and sustain us. Like the fresh drops of rain.